messy. This is what I really should be wearing goggles when I do it. Actually, I think the failure mode is not going to be the whole thing just explodes. It's probably going to be like a little hole opens up and just a stream of water shoots out of it. And we'll continually pump uh, CO2 into it if there's a hole in it. Like, yeah. it's, like there's just, yeah. it doesn't stay up to yeah, 20 psi, so just turn off the pressure. Or release the quick release valve. And it shuts off. Okay, so here's the assignment we're doing this week. Um, we're going to get to the point where we can build random expressions and then plot them on the screen. So to do that, uh, right now we have add, multiply, and sign as operators. Is that right? So you need to add two more binary operators. One of them should be divide, and one of them can be of your choosing. So add, subtract, or not, not add, uh, subtract, um, exponent, what else could be a binary operator? That's a unary operator. <coughs> root. Like root something like three root four. I mean, it's just an exponent. That's operator. just an exponent, really. Uh, but but, but you, could, you do that practice, perhaps. Um, modulo. So, so the second one could be of your choosing. And then for the unary operator, uh, we should probably do the log function. I mean, your other choice is like cosine or tangent, and that's copy, paste, change one thing, and call it good. <laughs> so we're not doing, and then cosine really is just sine, but shifted, right? I mean, there's nothing really special about it. Now, division and log both have a couple of problems in that what happens if you divide by zero? Yeah. It's, it's undefined. So actually, if you tr if you try to uh, generate an expression where the denominator is zero and then you evaluate it, your program is just going to crash at that point because you're passing it to the real division operator, which is going to cause an exception. So what I want you to do is we're going to do what's called protected divide, which is if you try to divide by zero, it actually returns a real value. <coughs> so the whole point is to get... But the whole point is to get a divide that's not going to cause your program to crash. It doesn't really matter what it returns, as long as it returns something when you try to divide by zero. Because remember, we're, we're getting random expressions, right? So what's what's the difference between a you know random expression and a divide that works just a little bit differently than a regular divide? The only place where it works differently is right at zero. Every, everywhere else, it works just like regular divide. Um, I want you to return a one if it detects that you're trying to divide by zero. Just so it, it doesn't crash. And then same thing for log. If you try to do the log of zero, that's also undefined. You should return a zero in that case. So yeah, it means if you try to plot log, it'll look a little funny, right? It'll, it'll plot one. What? It'll plot one, won't it, if we return one? For divide, yeah. return one. for log, return zero. Yeah. So it'll return zero, and then it'll go down, and then it'll start coming up again. That's all right. But it just, we're just protecting it so that if these two situations do come up, our program doesn't just crash at that point. Because we, if the program crashes, then we're not able to do the, the you know, generate more um, um, offspring from it because our program just died. We don't want it to just die. Right. We want it to keep going. Uh, next, we're going to make something called an expression factory. An expression factory, and I'll, I'll tell you about factory methods, uh, factory classes here in a, um, today. And these are classes whose purpose is to create objects for you. So you think about what a, a regular factory does. A factory creates things, and so a, a, a factory class creates objects. And this is going to be the factory that creates random expressions for us. And then uh, we're going to have a function class to represent a function. And it's going to have all these methods here. A constructor that generates a random expression. A constructor that takes an expression and uses that. An eval that evaluates the function. A two string, a count, and a plot. OK, anyone have a heart attack yet?
actually, uh, you've already done most of this, or in theory, you've done most of this. Watch you do it. You watch me do it. Okay, that's where your work is going to be, is actually typing it all in, or copying and pasting some of it in. So I'm not actually going to show you how to, let's walk. I won't show you how to add the operators. There's plenty of examples of operators that are already in there. You just need to kind of copy and paste what I've got, and I, won't, I shouldn't say that. You need to look at what I've got and create your own. <laughs> Sort of change the order of things a little bit. Plus, add on this protected divide and protected log. So, let's talk about um, factories. And so, I'm not going to show you the actual expression factory, I'm going to show you a linked list factory. <laughs> Stunned silence. We got our empty list. What's a singleton? Something with nothing. Yeah, something that has one thing in it. A list with one thing in it, or a list with nothing following it, and then what's a compound? Something with something after it. Something with something after it. <laughs> it's a list with at least one thing following it. Uh, what kinds of things could those following things be? Compound, a singleton, or empty? Actually, just a compound or a singleton. You can't have an empty. Compound. Although there's nothing technically disallowing it in our setup here, uh, following a compound should either just be a compound or a singleton. And do you remember how to create lists? Classes here. Singleton. And then I need to pass in something in the constructor. Were we using lines or string? I don't remember. Uh, these are ints. Okay. Seven. Seven. Initializing. There we go. Did you use singleton because uh, that's the real answer? Or, or could, could you have done comp? Could have done compound. So this is a this is a list with just the number seven in it. How can I see what's in the list? A dot two string. Good. How about a a list with three things in it? Two compound. How many are in list A? One. Yeah, so I, all right. So. Uh, <laughs> what do you want to see? I did the compound list. Be in compound seven, compound five, six. Singleton. Oh, okay. New singleton. Okay. Thank you. So let's say I want to write a method that uh, gives me a random one of these things. What do you think would be kind of like uh, how you'd start doing that? you do when you want to do, you know, random 
some stuff. Random number. Random number. Random random number. <laughs> okay. So if, if we've got, uh, if could, we want to generate one of these things here, you could what assign should a number. Of random numbers be? You could assign a number to each of them and then just do math.random, right? Or yeah, so we could assign a number to each one of those. Yeah. So we could say maybe compound is... Two. 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 Singleton is... Nine. Well, zero. <laughs> nine. Singleton is one, empty zero. We just do zero, one, zero, two. Zero, one, and two. That works. So that, way, that way we just need a random number between zero, one, and two. Exactly. And uh, so we're basically going to roll a three-sided die. And whichever number comes up, that's that's the one we're going to get. Give it. Three sided die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 that make those. Shit, we're a D three. Uh, just see what yeah. D three. It's, it's a flat triangle, right? <laughs> flat triangle. Bottom. Whichever point is not pointing away from you, that's the one it is. <laughs> okay. So let's make a new class here called. Hey. I like um, something. And then this. Uh, we need to roll the dice. So we'll go, let's say, uh, int r equals math.random. And what number do we get back from math.random? 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.3. We get a number between 0 and 1. Symbols mean? Zero. Include zero. Does not include one. So it's actually like zero to point nine 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 nine. Now we want to give us a number from zero to two, but it's not continuous. It's these three numbers. So we need to take this range and scale it up. So what do we multiply this by to get this? Three. 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 Why not two? Two would be enough. It's three. Zero and one. So, we, so if we multiply by two, this would give us a range from zero to almost two, but not including two. And we actually do want it to include two. So we're going to actually scale it up to Three, but then have it not include three. And then cast the whole thing as an int, which causes it to forget about the pieces in the middle. This gives us 0 to 1, multiplied by 3, making an integer. And now, have you guys seen a switch statement before? Yeah. No. No? Yeah, it was two switches on the wall. I don't quite nice. understand how it works. So it's just kind of like a, a, a chain of if-elses. But a switch statement allows you to uh, compare one value, in this case r, against several possible values. Plus a kind of an else case. So this says uh, we're going to do, it's called a switch because it's basically like an if else. If, if r is equal to 0, do this thing. If r is 1, do this thing. If r is 2, do you think so this thing. So we're evaluating r. Yeah. So we're going to evaluate the value of r, and we're going to say Case zero. So case zero. So basically, if r is equal to zero, we're going to do something. Uh, and there's case one, case two, and then default, which is if it's anything else. Can okay. it be? Hmm? Can it be? 
not in this case. <laughs> but it's good to have all of them in there. Never know. You could always have. And this multiple. also allows us to expand it out later on, so that we want to do something else. What the heck was that? <laughs> I think he's free now. I do not want to know. I have a question. Someone needs to move back. <laughs> you always have to fault for an exception. Like, Please you're not there. accepting or something yeah. that's going to happen. Okay, so if I want, uh, if, what did we decide case zero was going to be? Empty. Zero. Empty? Okay. So if, if, it's, if it's a zero, I'm going to create a new empty and return it. I just set up a variable, which is essentially this piece right here. And then I assign it to be a new empty, and then I return that thing. Do you have to have that next variable in there? Well, you, you what I had before was I had return new empty. And that works the same way? Works the same way. Yeah, okay. that's right. this, this could be anything. Well, if you tell it to return a list, public list, random list, then return at empty would work, right? right? So this needs to be list. Yeah. Because our, our list factory can return any one of those three things. And what unifies those three things is the list interface. So does that answer your question? I liked it better without X. Yeah, we should is do it without a, X. With the return? Yeah. Just like that? Yeah, it doesn't really make a difference. But yeah. No, it's makes better. Now, it, it makes more sense. It takes up less space. When you yeah. had the when you had the space up there, it was yeah. kind of confusing, like because it wasn't really returning anything. Like it wasn't. Yeah, because like, like, like well, what are we going to put there? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So the random list returns a list. So you want to just leave this as a return? Yeah. yeah. You get two votes. <laughs> Three. Yes. yes. Up that side of the class. Yeah. You want to put return there? Okay, so you realize this is exactly the same as what I had there before. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, uh. uh I can declare the list variable, assign it, and then return it. <coughs> I can just say you return it. That's the same thing. Okay, and then uh, the way you construct a switch is after each one of the, the things to do for a particular case, you put the word break. Does it return act as a break, though? Yeah, but what I want you to, to get, uh, used to. Uh, get used to when you do a, a switch, it's always switch expression. First case, do something break. Second case, do something break. Third case, do something break. So would it, would it really be necessary in the case, though, when you're actually returning something? No. Um, no. no. I just want you to All get right. used to seeing that syntax. Okay. So, so somebody else who, who, who looks at this and doesn't see the break is going to go, what? I mean, it, it's just sort of like it's, it's part of the way you construct a switch is you put that break there. Okay. Even though in this particular situation, it's not necessary. So it will really help you if you're just not returning something, if you're doing a yeah, different so if operation. Yeah, I had the original one, yeah. which was list x and then x equals new empty, and then return list, I'd, I'd have to put that break in there. Okay. They, that, that tells them, I'm done with case similar zero, come out of the switch and do the next thing. Can you use break in uh, other methods aside from switch? While, well, if you still in loops. 
two slow moves. Yes, if you want to, if you want to break out of a loop early, you just break. Two. Okay. Is switch just like a more complicated loop? Like it's actually a more complicated hit bells. Oh, okay. It, it doesn't loop through. It only does it once. Okay. For case number one, return new um, uh, singleton. Singleton. Can I put anything in it? Okay, and, and singletons need uh, uh, something to be passed in, in the constructor. Just put another random in there. <laughs> well, you should Just have put to. a random number in there. Yeah. Oh, there's my random. No. Oh. You, need, you need to make a new random generator then. Just put in six. Well, Just put in six. <laughs> Guaranteed, <laughs> Guaranteed <laughs> random. <laughs> We how about um, a random number from negative ten to ten? A million. A million. Negative ten to ten also works. What? That also works. Negative ten to ten. Yeah. Okay. So, so how do I generate a random number from negative ten to ten? You map the random modulo twenty and subtract ten. Almost. Um, but but you multiply by twenty, not modulo. So you want you want to scale this up to a range of zero to twenty, okay. and then subtract ten to make it symmetric around zero. Okay. okay. So so we get our random number from zero to one. Scale it up to zero to twenty. Subtract 10, and then cast the whole thing to an end. Paul? Oh. Isn't that just, okay, so you got from 0 to 20, doesn't the subtracting 10 just take 10 away from that random number? Does that just make it yes. math random dot 10 times 10? No. What does order of operations tell you gets done first? Multiplication. Make a random number. And make, make a random number. Times 20. Multiply it by 20. Then minus 10. And then subtract 10. And then subtract 10 from that. So this 10 does not subtract 10 from 20. Is that what you're asking, Paul? I see. I see. So it makes negative numbers. Yeah. Negative 10. negative 10 to positive 10. Because the original scale was 0 to 20. And we're just <coughs> sliding it down the number line. Can follow a compound. Another compound or a singleton. So we want it to randomly pick one of those. So we want to call this factory again. We want to call the same <laughs> thing to see what we're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can we call random list? Couldn't we do that with singleton too? Is call it and say, hey, what do you want for the singleton? But what, well, a singleton only holds a number. Okay. Yeah. But a compound holds a list. A compound, list. Singleton. Or a number. Or, an, well, it holds a number and it, it, a. It can't hold an empty though, right? So it can't hold an empty, so we'll, we'll so we're gonna have to exclude that. that. <laughs> yeah. Could we call random list again? Yeah. 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 And actually, one thing we can do is, um, do we? Well, we'll, we'll fix it in a moment here. Um, but yeah, we can just call random list again. Because what does random list return? A list. A list. A list, and that's exactly what we want to put there, right? So we'll call. Well, we're going to have to exclude empty somehow so an empty doesn't pop up. Yeah. So, what so we do we, like we could change the value of R at that point. Um, or maybe we could set up our random list so it never returns an empty. Zero. You could do that. <laughs> well, what do you think? I mean, do, do, should we return an empty list? Well, if you want to return an empty list, list straight off the bat, What's I mean. The point of having one? 
so that we can ask it size. <laughs> Oops. So, bracket, typing bracket. <laughs> For completion. I mean, if you're doing a linked list, you really do want to start with an empty list and start building it up. Um, <laughs> For our random expressions, we're never going to have an empty expression. There's always going to be at least one thing in there. I mean, it, you know, it'd be like saying, I have a function of x that's equal to nothing. <laughs> that's, it. that's kind of a useless function, right? So there should always be at least, you know, something there, even, even if it's one. So what do you think? Do you want to do you want to make random list never return a <coughs> Make it two, two and plus one, right? Get rid of that. Oh. And change this to zero and change this to one. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> Good thing I did it. Wait, so is it like that? Yeah. So so it's either gonna return a compound or a single thing. We'll never get an empty. Sounds good. And then um, If for some reason we got something other than a zero or a one, nothing. Oh, we return our empty. Let's see that. We, this, this should never happen. But yeah, how would you get anything aside from a zero or a one? We wouldn't. So um, uh, Alexander was was saying, well, maybe we could return. We could throw an exception there. Yeah. Uh, maybe we could return null. We we should actually, for our particular situation, never get this. Uh, again, I want, I want to put in there for completion that when you're constructing a switch statement, you're usually going to have all the cases enumerated plus a default. And the breaks. And, yeah, and the breaks. So, but then uh, when, if you return an empty, does that shut everything down? Uh, <coughs> but we should never get that. So you understand this here? That when we make a new compound, we fill it with a random number, and then we add to it a random list. This could go on forever. This could go on forever. Um, um, <laughs> how do we make it so it only unlikely. goes to like 20? Well, so we'll well, talk, well, let's just see the coin. Right now it's 50 50, so it's like one out of two, one out of two, one out of two, so every. Okay. Uh, let's see, I'm missing a brace, right? You don't put brackets in my class. The parentheses. Oh, yeah. Oh. And then you can't have a break there. Mm -hmm. It's actually saying, it's we'll, saying never, we'll never get. It's that point. <laughs> so don't put the break. All right. Yeah, but normally a switch would have a break. <coughs> yes. Paul. Why did it not, why did it not like the break? Uh, it says it, it will never reach that statement because oh, just right before the, the return, right. the yeah. return breaks out of the loop too. Breaks out of there. So but it, then, it, didn't you say we need the break? Normally, when you're constructing a switch and, it, and there isn't a return involved inside there, oh, okay. you would need those. Oh, okay. So that's a BlueJ thing. It's a Java Java compiler so, saying there, it, it, it's letting you know that there's a statement in there which might not be a break. It could be something like. Uh, What's going to be our constructor? <coughs> I'll, never re I'll never reach that. So, I mean, the other compiler that might let you keep that in the BlueJ. It's not BlueJ, it's the Java compiler. Oh, uh, even like if you were to use any other thing, it would still want to let you. Like a C it. compiler, I think, would go, all right. <laughs> it looks cool. <laughs> I'll leave it up to you to figure that out. It might give you a warning, it says I'm reaching goals. Java actually says, no, I'm not going to let you compile this because you wrote a program that clearly has um, I say a bug, but something that's clearly uh, shady. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
choose for him to Well, so how can I see what's inside that list? I mean, how can I, like, F that. How, can I, a string. how can I call two string on it? Just tap it on the uh, two string. No, it doesn't. What I should have done is I should have gone list A Something. equals F dot random. Like you can't access your first list. list. Now I can go A dot two string. Do it again. Paul? What, what did you do with, with that last statement when the list A equals F dot random list? So, so F dot random list returns a list. Right. And I just assign it to a variable. Oh, okay. So that now I can call methods on it. Oh, okay. Now let's do it again. <laughs> this is real random. All right. You can't go like that hey. dot yeah. random list dot two string. Actually, I could. But that's all you did with your But because I'm not assigning to a variable, I've, I've now I've lost access to it. Okay. So if I do it again, I get you know, yet another. What do you mean you've lost access to it? <coughs> so there's no way for it's me been to created now and destroyed all at the same time, kind of. Yeah. So so random list here returns a list which right. I call to string on, right. but then it's once gone. I'm done with that, since I'm not storing away that list in a variable. I have no way to now access that list anymore. It's, it's gone. Right. You're only going to get three every eight times. You got zero twice. And every 16 lists, you get a four. Oh my god. <laughs> 32 times you get five lists. So, you know, it could go on forever, but every time it rolls the dice, it flips the coin in this case, there's yeah. a one in two chance that it's going to be a singleton, and then that's the end of it. So we should reduce the singleton chance to like 10% and make the compound chance 90%. Ooh, how could we do that? And then it'll go a lot longer. Uh, I don't remember. Well, we could add two Let's we'll expand to this to yeah. three. And then we can say... Actually, yeah, make it a 10, and then do case 1 through 8, case 2. Then it'll work too. This is now only better than the second. With a switch, you can't do, like, if it's between 1 and 10. You have to list out all the cases explicitly. Well, you could do, like, <coughs> case 1. You only check for one case, and then just let the rest go to default. So case yeah. 1, make a singleton. Default, make a... Case 0, make a singleton. Case anything else... Make a compound. Make a compound. So like a oh, do five. So if you do, yeah, if you do times ten, I can make it a percentage. What do you guys think? Am I confusing things too much? If I mm -hmm. make it twenty percent. Ooh, zero, two, three, negative three, negative eight, negative eight. Yes. Right. Yeah. So if I roll a zero, which there's a one in ten chance of that happening, I'll get a singleton. The other nine times. The other nine times I'll get a compound. Perfect. Two comes up a lot. So does negative nine. chance of it only being a singleton, and yet we still have not had a singleton for the first one. We should have had a singleton by now. There we go. <laughs> 
Now we should get a whole bunch of them, right? <laughs> anyway, so that's pretty cool. Um, so, so that's basically a factory. Is It is a class that produces objects. So instead of you explicitly calling new to create a singleton or a, com a compound, you ask this other class to do that for you. Uh, there's one more thing that we could do to this, and that is uh, when I used the factory here, I had to create a new factory, and then I called random list on it. How many factories do I need? Like, can I, can I create another factory called G? And then I can go G dot random. List uh, to string, to string, right? And I can go f dot random list dot to string. And so these are now two factories that are pumping out objects. But how many factories do I really need? One. I only need one factory because there's really no difference between those two factories. So what I'd like to set it up is we set it up to do is so that I don't even have to create a factory. I just have a factory always there, and I just ask it to produce random lists for me. In other words, what I'd like people to do is just say list factory dot random list. And just ask the list factory, give me a random list. And I do that by making this method static. A static method belongs to the class.